Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Siksha Deep. Today I am going to teach you motion and time of class 7th. It is completely based on the CBSC syllabus. In this chapter, you will learn about different types of motion, slow or fast, what is speed and its unit, uniform and non-uniform motion, measuring time and its unit, how to measure speed, distance and time graph. So let's move on. Motion. What is motion? Have this ever came across your mind? What is motion? The action or process of moving is called motion or when the object changes its position is also called motion. As the horse is moving, when the horse is moving it means it is changing its position. So for example running, jumping, cycling etc. These all are motion. Different types of motions. There are different different types of motions. The they, they are rectilinear motion, circular motion, periodic motion. Rectilinear motion, motion of an object in a straight line. Example, vehicles moving in a straight road, boy walking in a straight path. You can see, see this. This ship is moving in a straight uh, in the in straight path in the river through the river. Next is the circular motion, the motion of an object along a circular path. For example, you can see the blades of this helicopter. They are rotating in a circular path. So certain examples are given below. Blades of the helicopter, a ceiling fans blade rotating around the hub, a stone tied to the rope and swung in circle. These are all day to day examples. Next is periodic motion. Motion that repeats in equal interval of time. Example, you can see this ball, bouncing ball. This ball is bouncing in a given equal interval of time. So many, exam many more examples are given. The pendulum, bouncing ball, a vibrating tuning fork. So these are the periodic motion. So you learned about different types of motion. Slow or fast. How you will come to know that certain vehicles moving in a road, among them, which one is moving slow and which one is moving fast? One more example, like there is a running race competition in your school. Your friends are running on the race. And how you will come to know which one of your friend is moving slow or which one is moving fast? So actually, you can come to know after looking that the distance covered by each of them in a given interval of time. So the distance moved by an object in a given interval of time can help us to decide which one is fast or slow. For example, here two arrows are given. One is A and the other one is B. So let's see which one is slow or which one is fast. This A and B will reach to a finishing point. And as you can see, A moved very slowly and B moved very fast. How? Because as the A covered took a lot of time to cover a small distance and B took less time, lesser than A to cover the given distance to reach the finishing point. So the arrow which takes shortest time to cover the given dis distance is having high speed. If you know the distance covered by two bike in one hour, then you can easily decide which one was faster. If the bike which covered, uh, which uh, covered uh, distance, given distance in less time is actually the fastest. So let's move on. You are probably familiar with the word speed. In the previous slide, we saw that the arrow with the higher speed seems to indicate that a given distance has covered has been covered in a shorter time. So if uh, uh, what is speed? If we'll talk about the speed, speed is the distance covered by a subject in a given in a unit time. Speed equal to total distance covered by total time taken. Now, if we'll talk about any vehicle, 
a vehicle starts moving slowly and then picks up the speed gradually so if a bike speed is 50 km per hour then we can say that the bike covers 50 km distance in one hour we usually consider only the total distance covered by it in one hour we are not bothered whether the car has been moving with a constant speed or not during the uh, during that hour it's slow or fast or it doesn't matter this is called as the average speed the speed calculated here which the speed which we calculated is actually the average speed of the bike so the speed calculated here is the average speed because a vehicle never runs with a constant speed it keeps on changing now here two more things you should keep in your mind first one is the uniform motion an object moving in a moving along a straight line with a constant or same speed the speed is not at all changing now you might be thinking that there is no car or bus which moves with a uniform motion obviously because a car a bike or bus always starts very slowly and then it takes on the speed and while stopping also it slows down so there are some examples given here examples hands of a watch they move with a uniform motion movement of a blade of the ceiling fan rotation and revolution of earth around the sun they all move with a constant speed it does not require that always it should be a straight line okay now next one is the non-uniform motion the speed of an object moving in a straight line keeps on changing now here the example is moving train or car a person jogging their speed always varies always changes it doesn't remain constant so that is called as uniform and non-uniform measurement of time now have you ever wondered if you don't have a clock how would you decide what time of the day is it how to decide what time of the day is it how time interval of month or year is decided many years ago our ancestors observed many events get repeated itself after particular event of time so that's why they made day month and year so like example sunrise and such sunset was the event one new moon earth revolution around the sun so these were the events and many more other events are also there which due to which they made day month and year now clocks or watch are used to know the time interval much shorter than the day uh, working of the clock is complex but they use the same periodic motion which we see in the simple pendulum you already know about the periodic motion i already told you about this so the best example of periodic motion is simple pendulum so simple pendulum uh, this uh, all the clocks working is gen they generally use this periodic motion now how does this work we'll see about it so like uh, you can do this at home with your friends and your family members you can take a rope a big rope uh, of about 100 centimeters and tie a metallic bob at the end now the main position is zero is o so after that what happens when if you will drag this rope this metallic bob from o to a and then leave it from a it will move from a to b and then again a to b it will keep on moving so that is actually called as one oscillation when the bob of the pendulum moves from position a to b and then again come back to a this is called as one oscillation and that is the time period the time taken by the pendulum to complete one oscillation that is called as the time period now how to calculate the time period that is here so time period of the simple pendulum time taken by number of oscillations how to do that for example you can take a pendulum whose length of the string is 100 centimeter takes 
43 seconds to complete 20 oscillations. So, how to find the time period of one oscillation? You have to find the time period actually. You will come to know the uh, time taken by the pendulum to complete one oscillation. So, for that, we'll take time period. We'll apply the same formula which is given here. Time period equal to time taken by number of oscillations. Equal to, it took for time taken. How much time was taken? 43 seconds by 20. Why 20? 20 is the number of oscillations and number of oscillation was 20 divided by 20. Equal to, it took 2.15 seconds. So, the time period is 2.15 seconds. What is 2.15 seconds? 2.15 seconds is the time period of one oscillation. So, this units of time and speed. Basic unit of time is second. This is the very smallest unit. If you want to go on larger units, then the they are minutes and hour, minute and hour. And basic unit of speed is meter per second or meter per minute or kilometer per hour. Always symbols of units are written in singular. Remember that this is very important. They are not written as meters per seconds or uh, meters per minutes, kilometers per hours. This will be wrong. They are always written in singular. Now, now how to calculate different different things like how to calculate speed, how to calculate distance, how to calculate time. If in your exam or certain question comes like uh, if distance is given to you and time is given to you and you have to find out the speed then the formula is this for cal calculating speed it is speed equal to total distance covered by total time taken and if you have to calculate the distance if by chance speed and time are only given distance are not given to you so what you will do for calculating distance equal to speed into time so next for calculating time if to a distance is given to you speed is given to you in the numerical question and time is not given then you can calculate by applying this particular formula so you don't have to remember all these three formula these three formulas are taken out from the same for from the one formula that is speed equal to total distance covered by total time taken so from this only you can find out the speed and you can find out the time for this you should know read the question properly see what is given to you and accordingly solve your question next is odometer and speedometer what is odometer and speedometer odometer and speedometers are generally on the vehicles either it is scooty car truck bus whatever it is so odometer is there this this is a meter that measures the distance covered by the vehicle speedometer the meter that records the speed speedometer is the meter that records the speed if you see this here what is the odometer this is the odometer here it is given it this vehicle ran four miles so this is the odometer which is telling you the which is measuring the distance covered by the particular vehicle speedometer meter that record the speed this is the speedometer and from the speedometer you can tell what is the speed of the vehicle whether it is 20 km per hour or 40 or 60 or 80 or 100 km per hour speed so this is the speedometer you will find this in all, in all the vehicles all the vehicles distance time graph now this is very important and you might be knowing a little bit of how to about how to make a graph now just suppose for example you are going on a picnic with your parents and you are traveling by car or you are going to a picnic by bus with your friend so here uh, what you will do you can do this at your home also this is practical thing which you can do while going somewhere with your parents or with your friends you can note down the time when you started and the odometer reading 
that what was the timing at a particular time when you started here i made a table based on my presumptions just uh, my assumptions for the, this is at 7 am the odometer reading was this 7:30 am the odometer reading was this 8:30 it was 56820 and so the uh, i mean 8 o'clock it was this and 8:30 it was 56840 so distance from the starting point from the starting point at starting point say at 7 am the dis the distance was 0 km traveled 0 km at 7:30 am it traveled 20 km what we did we subtracted these two it ran 20 km and at 8 o'clock it ran 40 km at 8:30 it ran the distance was 60 km so based on this we'll plot a dis distance time graph uh we'll plot a distance time graph based on the table which was given in the previous slide the distance time graph is actually a line graph distance time graph shows the vehicle is moving in a constant speed as we got the straight line this is the distance time graph now here this one is the x axis and this is y axis time is represented on the x axis and distance in kilometers is represented in y axis now here the timing here the timing i wrote 7:30 am 7 am 7:30 am 8 am 8:30 am and here the distance in kilometers are given Uh, 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 now at 7 am the distance traveled by the vehicle was 0 km so it we i pointed on 0 at 7:30 am the distance tra traveled by the vehicle was 20 km so it is marked here after that at 8 am the distance traveled by the vehicle is 40 km i marked it here at 8:30 am the distance traveled by the vehicle is 60 km it is marked here so by marking all the points we got a straight line and this shows that the vehicle is moving in a with a constant speed now why distance time graph is important what is the importance or significance of that distance time graph graph provide a variety that provide a variety of information when we compare to the table for example uh, i gave uh, the uh, if you will see that table the information which is given in the table you will come to know the distance moved by bus only at some definite time intervals on the other hand if we we'll see this table from the distance time graph from this graph we can find the distance moved by the bus at any instant of time for example if i want to find at 7:15 7:15. How much the bus traveled at 7:15? We can we if we will see the point will come around here. It means at 7:15 the bus might have tra might have traveled 10 kilometers. So this is the significance of a distance time graph. uh like if it's a uniform motion the graph as you as you can see it will be a straight line a slanting straight line. and if the vehicle is in rest it will be a straight line like this way a sleeping straight line and if it is a non uniform motion non uniform motion the uh, it means the speed keeps on changing then the line will be a curved line so this tell you about the uh, uh, distance time graph so i hope you learn a lot in this chapter so if you have any doubt you can comment below and ask me i'll rectify all your doubts and for having patience and listening to me don't forget to like subscribe and share thank you so much